today we're going to have a little look at the material sourcing uh, and the origins and the processes used to manufacture material into their standard forms. We're going to be having a look at the sources of paper and timber and we're going to be having a look at how to understand the processes used to produce standard forms of timber and paper. This is for your AQA GCD T exam and it will be coming under the specialist technical principles section uh, and for that you're required to understand at least one material. We're going to look at paper and timber because they're relatively similar at uh, least start off in the same way. Um, and that start off is obviously their source uh, for both paper and timber. The source of that material is clearly trees. Um, now under the Forestry Stewardship Council, um, sustainable forestry, um, when trees are cut down, they're replaced uh, to be able to grow again in softwood forests, pine forests, etc. Uh, that is environmentally friendly uh, as if we're cutting trees down to use or turn into paper or building timber. Uh, they're replanted and regrown. We are not going to uh, decimate the, the, the number of forests in, in the country. Uh, but let's get on to the production of paper. The first step would be cutting down those trees and shredding them into fine chippings. Water is then added to those fine chippings and the water is boiled up to make a wood pulp. Wood pulp looks like oatmeal or porridge. A variety of chemicals and dyes can be added to create a certain type of paper or color. Um, and then that pulp is laid out over a fine mesh and big rollers uh, it's rolled between uh, big rollers. It squeezes all of the liquid, all the water out of them um, and combines those wood fibers together to make a very thin paper. That's the general process. We'll have a look at each of those steps in a little bit more detail now. So after the wood is uh, shredded in, in, in timber plants, uh, there are two ways then of breaking down the wood or breaking down the pulp to make paper. Uh, that's mechanically and chemically. Uh, when we break the timber down mechanically, the resulting pump pulp is known as ground wood pulp. Breaking that down mechanically just means uh, machine machinery uh, hammering, hammering the um, timber uh, chippings and the water and, and mixing them together um, until it creates this porridge-like goop. The process doesn't require chemicals, uh, but because it's not using chemicals, the lignin, which is the element of, of timber uh, that yellows paper, that's not going to be removed because it's not using chemicals to remove it. Um, mechanical pulping results in a relatively high yield of pulp, so you get a lot of pulp out of it, but the paper turns yellow, and I said the paper turns yellow because that lignin has not been removed. So this type of paper, where we're getting a large yield, but it yellows over time, so low quality paper, is used for newspapers and often non-permanent types of paper. You wouldn't use paper that has pulp that has been mechanically ground for high quality paper, things that you would use artists or photographers or advertising, things like that, because it would yellow over time. It's not high quality. To get a higher quality wood pulp that can be turned into higher quality paper, you would have to chemically pulp it down. Uh, and this is using the craft process. And we use the craft process because we want to break down the lignin and that lignin is found inside the cell of the plant, the cell walls of the plant. Um, the lignin, again, is the element or the chemical that yellows paper over age. So that craft process will chemically break down and pulp the paper or the, the wood fibers, uh, remove the lignin, um, and therefore it won't yellow when it's exposed to light and air. So we've got our pulped um, timber pulp. We've got our we've got we've got our wood pulp now. We're ready to uh, adding. We're ready to start adding the dyes and additives 
to form the special type of paper that we want. So wood pulp generally is a pale gray material and pale gray isn't a, a very good color for paper. So most paper production, so making cartridge paper, newspaper, um, copier paper, etc., will add bleach to the wood pulp. Adding bleach to it obviously gives it a much whiter color. But we can also add things like um, dyes to create a different color papers. We can add uh, a product such as kaolin, for example, um, and that creates a glossy surface on the paper once it's been pressed, and we can use kaolin to create magazine paper and gloss paper. So we can add those dyes and additives to create the type of paper that we want. We then have to create the sheets of paper. So the pulp mixture is diluted with some water uh, and it's strained through a moving screen made a, made a fine mesh, a bit like a, a big colander or a sieve in order to create a big fibrous web. Um, that web is then pressed in between big rollers, which removes all of the water and that wood pulp, that, that, that kind of pulp is uh, is pressed between those big rollers over and over again to remove the roll to remove the water and to create a thin sheet of paper and that big thin sheet of paper then is wound around rollers so you get a huge spool of paper before it's cut into the correct size so that paper sheet then can be removed from the mesh screen mold while it's still wet um, When it's dry, that sheet can be cut to size into your stock forms, A4, A3, A2, etc. So that was paper formation. We'll have a little look at timber processing now. Uh, timber starts off in the same way. Let me just get up the... There we go. Timber starts in the same way with the felling and cutting down of trees. Um... What you will often see if you go for walks through the woods are big stores of logs. So once the trees are felled, the logs are stored where they cut, big piles of logs, before they are loaded onto big flatbed lorries and transported to the sawmill. Once it's at the sawmill, it goes through the conversion process. Now there's a few things that have to happen first. The logs first need to be debarked. Once they've been debarked, uh, they go through rough sawing. Or this is all conversion. Conversion is the is the, the cutting of the logs into usable planks or sheets. Um, so it gets debarked, and then you can rough saw the the timber. Rough sawing gets them into roughly similar flat planks of timber. There's a few ways of doing it. The most common are through and through sawing and quarter sawing, which you can see at the bottom of the slide. That gets roughly the same size timber planks, uh, but obviously they still have the angle from the you know the curve of the of the log. Uh, they're not all the same thickness. It was very rough. Uh, so then they go through a resawing or a planing process. Uh, the planing process squares up all of the edges to create your 90 degree angles. It also ensures that all of the uh, thicknesses of all the planks are all the same. So the planing process ensures that all of the planks of wood are identical. The issue that we've then got is that the timber planks or the timber boards uh, still have a high water content in them. This is called green wood. So, so timber with a high water content is called green wood. Uh, and this is impossible to work with. Uh, you'll know if you've tried to start a campfire with damp wood or if you've tried to saw damp wood. It's just, it's just impossible. Uh, it doesn't work. So a process called seasoning is used uh, to remove the water from the timber. Um, this can be done in a kiln or it can be done naturally. It can be done either in a kiln or it can be done naturally. Uh, a kiln looks like this. And that is when uh, the timber planks are stacked on top of each other. Uh, each row has spaces in between them to allow the air to circulate. And the kiln um, increases the temperature of the increases the temperature through convection currents 
to allow the wood to evaporate out of the timber. Now this is done quickly. Okay, this is a quick form of seasoning. Natural uh, seasoning takes place still in the in the forest or outside of the sawmill where their timber planks are stacked the same um, with spaces in between them and they just have a tarpaulin sheet over the top um, and they're left out to the elements but rain can't get on them and this allows the water to evaporate and the timber to dry out but much slower. So that is the processing of both paper and timber. For your AQA DTGC, you will need to know the key stages of each process and a little explanation of what is happening at those key stages.